Mmm. Better late than never, I guess. Crab Tendo. What is going on, guys? We are back at it again, and it's almost 2020. And goodness gracious, Korg Triton VST is here finally. And a lot of you guys reached out to me on IG, producers of the gospel community, R&B, hip hop, pop, rock. Y'all wanted my opinion on this, and I'm definitely here for you guys. I really do appreciate you all reaching out. But man, Korg Triton VST in your DAW standalone is here. So there is a bit of excitement with that. So we're gonna go ahead and check it out and I'm gonna show you what you can do with this. Links in the description box. Make sure that you download the demo first because it is $200 and that is asking a lot, but make sure that it is for you before you purchase. I'm gonna go ahead and play some tracks that I created with this and then I'm gonna play some of the sounds and talk about how it works. Mm. Trying to be a So this next track features one of my favorite categories within the Core Triton or the Trinity Rack if you have that, and that is the motion synths. So this is a classic sound that everybody loves, and I'm pretty sure you'll be happy that it's back in, in perfect representation. So I'm gonna go ahead and play the example because I didn't really finish this track yet. Hey. Uh-huh. Bring that bass in. Yeah, <laughs> really dope, really, really dope. So some of the things that I really want to talk about this is, again, uh, even though it's $200, and again, I'm kind of like against the price, but at the same time, hey, court, run your business how you want to. And, you know, there's certain things that kind of justify that. And before I even do that, I'm going to go ahead and open up a new, a new project here. I'm going to save this stuff first. And then we're gonna talk about it because there is a lot to talk about despite, you know, it has is certain things that I am just loving. I'm really loving about this. So now that we have this new project up, I definitely wanna talk about the 
when you load it the first time. So the GUI in itself looks very traditional. It looks very nice. Uh, one of the things I do like about this synth is that it's not very CPU heavy at all. So it works very well. As you can see, I can screen record without any problems. And you know, you have a caveat of sounds. Hey, no! Oh, shit, say it again, say something else. Oh! Yeah, I know, Pinky. But anyways, uh, you have a whole bunch of sounds that you could work with. So if you hit this button right here, or do you hit this part of the screen, this part of the GUI, uh, it brings up all of the sounds here. And the categories are pretty good. Uh, one of the things that you'll see is that you can search for a sound in a specific manner by typing it in. If you type in bells, boom, you get all your bells and so forth. So just use your imagination with that. Uh, you have your classic Neptune's guitar. Uh, you have that and you know, you just have a whole bunch of sounds that you can work with and that's pretty cool. Uh, you have all of the expansions that comes with it. I mean, if they're going to charge $200, 3000 presets is necessary in that regard. Uh, again, motion synth is my favorite category. So I'm, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to be a little bit lazy and just use my music theory and use the <laughs> push so you can hear the plushness. So if you're into ambience and stuff like that, ambient sounds, you have that. Uh, let's go into bells and mallets because, you know, I'm, I'm a bell and mallet person. And if you do like a lot of Afro beat. And if you're wondering, again, I'm in a F Dorian, a major, like a major variant there. So, you know, if you hear sort of that K Trinata type vibe, that's pretty much the scale that he uses in that case. Uh, let's go into something a little less ambient. Oh, whoa, velocity, Columbus. Ah. <sighs> uh. Man, let's brass, of course. Uh, the shoddy red stuff here. I can't remember which one that he used the most. Let's go into more of his vibe, which would be a harmonic minor. Harmonic minor F, that's more metro and... So, you know, you, you want film brass? These are all sounds that are in the Trinity too, as well. But what I really want to focus on is some of the things that does that it does do. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go. Oh, I don't have to go back out. But uh, what I'm going to do is select uh, motion sense again. Uh, I'm going to mess with some of the sounds here. I'm going to go ahead and engage in key again. Because I want to talk about this right here, which is the Pidgeo. So you can do a Pidgeos in here. And as you can see, they go up by scale, but they, you also can go into these tabs here and you can mess with the ARPs and you can see some of the features that you have. You can pick a whole bunch of different algorithms. Uh, just like the original, uh, you can pick the traditional up if you wanna go normal, <laughs> but uh, you can go here. Uh, you can pick the resolution or the time signature, which is 16, 16. You can go triplets, uh, so I got eight triplets. Let's go uh, with a sound that's a little less cinematic, I guess. Mm -hmm. 
And then you can just carve out how many octaves you want to play. You can do one to four. Change that up a little bit. Go three. But you also can deep dive. Uh, again, you can deep dive really far. Uh, you can choose what you want in your higher octaves. Uh, you can choose uh, different things. This is what Nexus 3 should have been like uh, in terms of this, like designing different sounds. So you can choose whatever uh, you want in your oscillator, your sample, and you can have crazy atmospheric type stuff. Again, you have access to two oscillators. So you can really customize whatever you want. Um, uh, in the drum section though, uh, you can do some other things, but I haven't really played with it. You can mess with the pitch. Uh, you can change the portamento. You can have it mono, legato. Uh, you can mess with the filter section. You can really f do what you want with this. You have an M2 section where you can mess with the ADSR. And <laughs> this just goes really stupid. It, it goes really stupid. I, I'm not going to play with you on this. Uh, you LFOs, you have your regular LFOs, like triangle, all the way down to different ones that even today's modern synthesizers, soft synths, don't have. And w what? Like, that's really ridiculous that, you know, you had the Triton setting trends that even modern day synthesizers that you would probably pay about 150 for. Uh, without the classic sounds, without the classic library, and or even maybe a less, and still wouldn't match this. So it kind of justifies a whole bunch of stuff here. Uh, again, browsing through your sounds, you have a gang of stuff that you could deal with. Uh, screen size, I didn't even know that you can change the screen size of it, so you can have it tiny. Ugh. Oh, man. I should have did that. But uh, go back in the menu and uh, change the screen size again. You could do extended. And I'm pretty sure it's going to be humongous. Yes. And, you know, I have a 1080p resolution. And for those who aren't wondering, uh, and then you can go, you, you have different things you can do. You can also lock within the category, just like if you was to have a Triton. And you can just go and browse through all of the motion sense and stuff like that. If you want to do that in your category, general MIDI, you can save your user and so forth. Like you, you have a lot of customization with this. So. It's a whole lot for $200 that even when I made my snarkily comments, didn't realize. So tell me how you feel about this, guys. <laughs> I don't know what to feel right now because it's kind of crazy and I don't want to save this because I don't want to go too deep into it. Nexus 3 came out. A lot of you guys like that. A lot of the modern day EDM and trap producers love Nexus 3, but damn, Court Triton? You got to believe that Nexus get a lot of their inspiration from this keyboard. And now you actually have the legitimate version of it with all the expansions. And that's one of the pros of it. But one of the bigger pros of this is that it's wide open. Like you don't have to just settle on the 3000 sounds that you got. You can customize it and not really know anything about sound design. So it's kind of perfect for people that love pl plugins and presets and like to make sounds, but don't really know all the inner workings. Arpeggiator, I mean, really good. You have your filter section, oscillators, all that stuff. We all talked about that. Very good pros that it has that is really good. And I, for one, think it's very good quality. It's pound for pound like the Triton itself. And I got to respect court for that. Uh, the cons, yeah, $200, that's asking a lot. But if you look at the competition at Nexus 3, it's $50 less. So if you didn't, you know, crack your wallet open for Nexus 3 like I did, then yeah, Cork Triton would definitely replace that and give you what you want. Uh, obviously, you can have both of those and you can have the best of both worlds. But yeah, it's a really good pro-con, pro-con and that's all you can ask for a synth like this. Do I, do I, do I give this, I give this the, stamp the stamp of, of approval? approval. <sighs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Damn.